So, welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we are doing our top five non-war games from 2019. Yeah. So it's only been six months in the making. <laughs> yeah. I think all of these we played last year, though. It just, uh, yeah. It just and several of them we played multiple, multiple times. But like, yeah, like I, Premier, it just took us a long time. I, a ton. Okay. Yeah. So, 2019, obviously a trillion games come out. But mm -hmm. we play mostly war games. Yeah, I'd say 85% of what we play is war games. So that's why we're doing a top 5 rather than a top 10. Because I, yeah. I don't know if I could fill a top 10. Well, I think I counted. We only had like seven or eight games that weren't war games that we played. So at least that were released. Into yeah, we right. played a lot. We played a of couple games, of others. Yeah, but they were all the ones. So yeah, and it, frankly, there were some amazing games that came out in 2019. Oh, really good, really good games. So to start, I don't care if they're a war game or not. Good games. Yeah, but yes, and that's uh, that's why I don't think we've made one of these before where it was non-war games. I don't think so. But either. I felt like it was worth doing because there were some mm -hmm. really, really good ones that came out and that we played a lot. And, and we also, really quickly, sorry, one one other caveat is we had that age old discussion of is this a war game? Yes. Or is this not a war game? Because there's a couple on here that I might consider more war games, but they're really not true war games. Yeah. Th so there were some war game companies that released games that were yeah. borderline. And there's this whole discussion about what is and isn't a war game. Right. And it's fairly arbitrary. So I, I, I felt like the focus was less about direct conflict and, and war. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm like, nah, yeah, let's make a nice list of, of yeah. non-ones. So I just want to make that, I get make it. that clear. Absolutely. So to start with, my number five is a game called Donning the Purple. Roman. And this is from Tompet Games, I believe, is what the company's called, yes. Mm -hmm. So this is a game that was kickstarted in 2018, uh, so, and we played a prototype copy back then, so it feels like it's a lot older than it is. Yeah, we actually did a prototype copy vi or video like yes. in 20, early 2018, yes. I think. And then it kickstarted, it, so it was actually released, in, and it hit people in 2019. Mm -hmm. This is a three-player game. You don't get many of those. No. The other major one that we play is a Churchill. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and Triumph and Tragedy, three-player game. Yes. But yeah, this is a three-player game. This does have a bot in it, so you can play mm -hmm. solo or you can play two-player. They have uh, done a separate expansion, which adds a fourth player mm -hmm. as well, called Virtues and Votes, which I haven't played with. But this is a really neat game. It's a very mm -hmm. small, tight game, and it's your vying for control of, of you know, the throne, basically. Yeah. You want to be the Roman Emperor, and it's got this really neat action economy system where you can only do certain mm -hmm. amount of stuff before you kind of expend yourself. Yeah, and it's trying to trying to be the emperor, you know, have your family in power, gain as many points as you can before someone assassinates you, or you know, there's a coup. And you do it again. All the while, you're trying to fend off barbarians. Mm -hmm. You're trying to avert natural disasters, things like that. So it's just a really neat game, uh, and it's 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 very tight and tense because yeah. Well, it's very cutthroat too. Yes, it's so like very cutthroat. You know, if you spend one too many of your actions, you won't be able to defend yourself yep. against getting stabbed in the yep. face. And so it, it, it's just, it's a neat little game. I really like it. I really it. enjoyed that because I think if you're playing it well with a couple of people that really know what they're doing, is you can actually become the emperor, be assassinated, and become it again. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like a, a revolving door, but it's so cool because you got to prepare for that. And if you are prepared, it's a little harder for your enemies to do that to you. So you might last for emperor for two or three rounds. I know that sounds ridiculous, yeah. but... But I really enjoyed that part of the game. The other part I really liked about it was the natural disaster stuff that happened. Yeah, just crazy. Because you just wanted to laugh out loud. Oh, I, Literally. But, but all that stuff has these game effects where there's this like happiness track of the people. Yeah, yeah. And so whilst you're the emperor, I'm like, ah, let's get the people mad at yeah. you. And yep. they're going to hate you. And then and they'll want to... And Kill then, it. Yeah. Yeah. And then like I become emperor and they hate me and I'm like, yeah. Oh dang. I because screwed, you drove my, that I screwed track myself. Down. Yep. It's very it. cool. Just it, there's little bits and pieces like that. It's just a fun little game. It I, comes in a small package too. I nice. really want to play the the expansion too. Yeah. We uh we've had that for a couple of months and 
But yeah, very neat game. Good company, solid company. They put out these two games now, and mm -hmm. I would expect some interesting things from them in uh, in the near future. And very so. well produced. Yes, yeah. a small game coming. This is, was their second game. Okay, and was it their second game? I believe they had another I don't one. What their other one was. It was a. It was some medieval tactical war game. I believe. Okay. I believe. Okay. Um, but it's really well produced for mm -hmm. a small company. Uh, it's they've knocked out of the park. It puts a lot of other companies to shame. Probably. Yeah. So yeah, Donning the Purple, my number five, really fun little three player yeah. game. I would agree with that. It's really really fun. All right, so my number five is not a war game in any way, shape, or form, but that's what this video is about, right? Yes. I would say this game is on the list because one theme. I'm going to say it. <laughs> Star Wars. I mean, look at that. Uh, you got you got starship combat there. You got you know, smugglers, bounty hunters, just fun. I mean, so this game is a, it's a type of pickup and delivery game. Yeah. Where you have contracts, you're hunting down bounties, you're trying to deliver certain shipments, you're trying to develop a crew. Each of those crew members have different abilities, different skills that will help you along. Some of the guys you start with, I don't believe are really that balanced. If you remember, Brum kind of dusted us with... Uh, who did he have? Han Solo, who's the best pilot in the galaxy. Yeah. So he was like moving three and four spaces. And the rest of us are, are like, like creeping along. Creeping. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Our sublight engines are all that's getting across <laughs> the galaxy. But it, it's a fun game. Well produced from Fantasy Flight Games. I bought this at Gen Con last year. Yeah, we played uh, We ripped Gen it open Con. and played <laughs> me that day. Um, we still need to get it to the table again just because we love these kind of games. It does have a solo uh, mode, which I have not played. Now that I say that, I'm going to go home and probably try yeah. to play it again, just to see how it works. I I liked this because it's like Firefly light, very very light, because it's a quicker game. Yeah, and that's both a benefit and a detriment. Yeah, what I like about Firefly is those decks of cards oh. at locations are so big because I've got all the expansions. You'll never get to the bottom. Yeah, of it. this one it's easier to go through the yeah. stuff so you can kind of see everything after a yeah. few plays. And for me, I want to play this with three or four. Yeah. When you play yeah. with just two, you, you lose some of that interaction and it's a yeah. bit less dynamic between players. Yeah. And I like interaction in games. Right. I think, but if you've got three or four, it's, it's, fun it's a Star fun Wars game, game right? It's a fun Running game. around shooting yeah. stuff and hiring mercenaries. That's cool. I like yeah. it a lot. And I think the production value is really cool. I just think it's a very interesting game. So yes. I'm glad I bought this. I think I got a really good deal on it in Gen Con, too. I, I want to say I paid 40 45 bucks for it, and it was on like Amazon for 60 at the time. So I got a really good deal. But yeah, Star Wars Outer Rim. I think it's a, almost said Pacific Rim, which is a great movie. <laughs> very, different, movie. very different. Yeah, so Star Wars Out of Rim, Outer Rim yep. from Fantasy Flight Games. <laughs> so My number five. My number four game is actually Watergate from Capstone Games. This is a good one. This is a really, really good game. Yeah. Um, and this is where we started getting into like, this is one of the best games of the year almost. Yeah. Um, but it's not a war game, so it's, it doesn't make those war game lists. It, it is a game that is conflict, but it's it, it's playing against each other and trying to, to find things out. But it's yeah. not a war game. It's you're, like you're not battling. investigation, political yep. intrigue game. It is a two-player game. Uh, and but what's interesting is um, Capstone were like, Oh, people say that it's like Twilight Struggle Light, but really, it's more like Churchill Light. Yes, agree. Where you have this little track where you've got stuff in the middle, and me and you are playing cards back and forth yeah. to bring those back and forth over to my side or to your side so you can control them. Then after you do that, um, those things play out as uh, either leads in your investigation that you're yep. going to pin to the board, or like a victory point marker, mm -hmm. or control of certain aspects or initiative, things like that. So it's really tense and really tight in that. It plays very quickly. Thirty minutes. Like I mean, yeah. When you know the rules, thirty minutes. And if it's taken longer than that, you're doing yeah. something wrong. Like this is not a game where you should. Like there's tough choices, but like yeah, just play it because if yep. you cock it up, just play it again. Yeah, right. It's not a big deal. And, and the one thing I really enjoy about it so much, and this is on my list too is I love that as Nixon, you can block certain routes. So you may have put all your cards in building this this web to try to get to where you need to get, and it's like, I can play a couple of cards and turn those guys against you. Yeah. So you always have to have that backup plan, but I love that ability to get at 
the, the strategy of your opponent. It's just really fun. Yeah, it's got a great amount of moving parts without being mm -hmm. overwhelming. The production value also very nice as yeah. well. The cards are big, they're well written, they have a lot of cool little historical bits. And it's this tiny little transportable package. Yeah. It's a really, really nice game. Yeah, we, we played this uh, for the first time last fall at Buckeye like, Game Fest yes. with Rodney from Watch It Played. Yes. He was there with us and... We had a great time. It was you and I playing. He but taught us how to play. It was... Yeah. Uh, it was very nice. And then I think we played it three or four other times. I keep saying that I'm going to play this with Paisley. Yeah. I think you could play this with Kelly as well. But getting her to sit down with a game is hard, <laughs> even in the best of days. I have to really do a lot of things to get that to, <laughs> to happen. So, but yeah, great game. Great game. Yes, that's my number four, Watergate from Capstone Games. Yeah. And it's it's my number four too. So we just said what we needed to say about Excellent, it. Yeah. I I would recommend this because it's you can just see a nice little package. You can take it anywhere. Yeah, it's a good convention game for that way. And it's thirty minutes, and you feel like you've eaten a steak. You know, you don't feel like you've just snacked on a on a little piece of prosciutto, and you know you've had some meat. And yeah. I I like that. So great game. Really like it. So my number three game is. Bleeding Kansas from Decision Games. And Great. this is a game that was on your war game list. I put it on my war game list because I thought it ticked most of the boxes, although it is area control and it's got a lot of cubes, so it's Euro-y like. So for but, me, those that to me it's this is an election game. Yeah, yeah. I am you're trying to control counties to influence the outcome of an election. But there's still war. You in it. do it you yeah. can do it through skirmishes, but you yeah. can do it through a lot of other stuff as well. Right. But for me this is like I and I put this this is a very similar style of game to five points gangs of New mm -hmm. York. One of the By best Mayfair. games of all time. Love it. So good. And and that's I love it's a it's a perfect style of game for me. Yeah. You've got con like direct conflict and putting guys out uh but you're doing it for a purpose. Yeah. And the purpose isn't just score victory points based on how many you've got. Well, in this one, you're influencing an election, but there's also all this other stuff you're doing on the election track as well, and it's the combination mm -hmm. of all these things mm -hmm. that might win you that and mm -hmm. score you a bunch of points. It plays pretty quickly, has a really good rule book, which I was very impressed with Decision yeah. Games for that. It was really clean, well, um, it was well developed. Well, and this is a John Paniski design. Yes. Uh, we did an interview with John on this, and uh, he does a lot of really cool games. This is kind of a game that he always wanted to do, but he was worried about blowback. Because if you if you know the history of John Paniski, his King Philip's War was kind of controversial. Yes, it was seen by the Native American community as a little bit offensive, and there was some hullabaloo around that. So I think he's been very hesitant to address any other, you know, controversial issue issues. Which this deals with slavery. You know, you're the anti-slavery side or the abolitionist side, and and this is prelude to the Civil War. Yes. The build-up right to the Civil War, and uh, I, I don't know. It's just a fantastic game on a very interesting part of American history. Probably a part of our history that we would prefer to be forgotten. Uh, but I, I appreciate guys like John putting the time and effort into designing a playable simulation or game on that topic. Yeah, and that's that's where this is a, a really good game for me, is it is a good game. Yes. It is fantastically well done yes the mechanics in it are great it's got so much tension it's a very tight game yeah uh you do get some there's some, he's got some really nice notes in the back about yep. the history of the thing and i and think the cards have some text on them you know as i well. think it's important to know to to remember people who um you know laid down their lives to to for, for abolition, you know, mm -hmm. for for the sacrifices that were made for the progress of good. Yeah. And I think this is a... I mean, I cannot tell you how much I like this game. Yeah. I like this game probably a lot more than some of the war games on my top ten war games list. Got it. This is a very, very, very good game. Very, and I very was, good. I went in it with zero expectations. Yeah. Because it's a topic I'm like, sure, yeah. okay. Well, we were given this as a good. review copy. And uh, probably because I did that interview with John... And man, I was pleasantly surprised. When I was going through the rules, I was like, yeah, this is going to be fun. We played it. It was really fun. I mean, you taught me in like 10 minutes. It's yeah. Super quick. So yeah, very good approachable game. Very, very good game. That so, I'd love to have on my list, but it was on my war game list. Leaving Kansas from Decision Games. Check it out. Very, very, very good. 
So that was your number three. That was so my number three. My number three now. So my number three is, unfortunately, this is a little bit of a fudging because um, this is not a first edition for 2019. It was a second edition. Yes. But we didn't come into contact with this game until Alexander went out on a limb and bought this copy, which is kind of a deluxified copy, right? It's not kind of. It is. Yeah, so the second edition is way fancier than yeah. the first edition, which the first edition is actually quite a number of years old. Yeah. So this is Pax Premier, second edition, d designed by Cole Worley, and it's from Worley Gig Games. Isn't that uh, who is I the publisher? Think yeah. so, Worley yeah. Gig. I can't say enough about this game. I know it's on Alexander's list. It's a little bit higher. I'll reserve some of my comments for that discussion. But I love this game. The menagerie of mechanics used are fascinating. Absolutely interesting how you use your multi-use cards. You're trying to buy these cards for their abilities. You can then score those cards by you know, assassinating people and doing other things. But it is about... The struggle between Britain and Russia over the the, the disposition of Af Afghanistan, um, you know, in the 1800s, right? Yep. Early 1800s. Fascinating game. I can't say enough about it. I think that the mechanics are, are amazingly well put together and just create a very fun, playable experience. So it's number three on my list. And if you look at the back of the box, and I don't know how the first edition compared. Not you? well. Okay. I've seen it. So these pieces are so amazing that it draws you into the game. I remember when we saw it on the table, we saw it at a convention before you even bought it. I remember thinking, what is that? But it's so, or maybe I saw it on Twitter. Yeah. But it's so amazing that a game can be constructed this way. And even the detail on the, like it's this beautiful. is one of the player boards. And this is like a Casbah. In the middle of probably cobble, you know. And that's the back of the board. Yeah, you, will it, never you won't see. even see it. No, that actually is the, this is where the cards go. That's the map. Oh, that's interesting. I've never seen that before. Yeah, the map's on the back. But oh. anyway, the, the, the art, and how many times have we played this game? Five, six, seven times? We played a bunch. <laughs> and just the detail, the, the map. This is the map, and that's why they call it Pax Rug, because it's yeah. literally, this is a canvas map, and it's gorgeous. It's, I mean, it's... Well, it so feels fun. very period. It feels very ethnic. It feels very appropriate. And it has metal coins. I mean... I bought those separately. Yeah, that's true. A anyway, the, these pieces, they're like... I mean, they almost are like terracotta. They're resin, but yeah, they, they look... But, oh my gosh, they're so amazing. It's so nice and tactile to play with. And it's so interesting because those units, those, those pieces represent roads. They can represent... Uh, infantry. What's the third thing they can represent? Uh, the, yeah, they're military units. They're roads. There was another. Maybe I'm. Maybe it's just military units. So and just roads. those two things. Yeah, yeah I so. uh, just very cool. Depending, you lay them down or you stand them up. They're military units. You lay them down. They're roads. So anyway, I really like that game. We'll talk more about it. Uh, yeah. But it's it's much higher on Alexander's list. I and I don't want you to think that it's because it's so well produced that I love it. I love it because it's a great game. Absolutely a great game. Yes. So that was, so that was my number three. three. And I can't believe it was my number three, but there are two games that I, I think I liked a little bit better. So. Okay. So my number two is Gandhi from GMT Games. And this is volume nine of the coin series. Not included in our rankings video that we did like a year and a half yeah, ago. Yeah, sadly this hadn't come so. out at the time. Because it would be quite high on yeah. that list. Uh, so this is another one. I think it was on your war game list, was it? No. I did not include it on the war game list because we had that discussion and I thought, uh, yeah, you're right. It's more of a political positioning type game and I left it off that war game yeah, list. Yeah, so something like uh, Fire in the Lake is war game. the Vietnam War, right? Yeah. That's a, that's, if you want to say that's a war game, absolutely. Yeah. This is much less of a war game to me, especially from a thematic standpoint. Mm -hmm. It's decolonization of, uh, of India. So... There are two factions in this. I think it's the Muslim League and the... Oh, what do they call them? I forget. Uh, the National Congress. Yeah. They are um, non-violent. And this is the first coin game to have non-violent factions. Mm -hmm. You're not going around killing people. Right. Or doing, you know, assassinations and insurgencies in the same way. Yeah. It's entirely different. Demonstrations. Yeah, demonstrations. Occupying railroads. Yeah. 
trying to do things peacefully. You know, Gandhi gets arrested. You got to get him out of jail. Mm -hmm. He gets arrested again. It'll yeah. happen. Uh, so it just feels very different. Again, a beautiful game. Mm -hmm. Maps great. Pieces are great. It's unique in its color scheme as well, which yeah. is always. It's just fun to see something like that on the board. Plus, it's a coin game. Coin yep. is a, a favorite system of mine. Love it. Uh, and this was such a different feel because you're like. I, I know I've got the mechanics of a coin game, yeah. but it feels very different from the others yeah. in a very good way, right? It's just a totally different flavor. This is a, a bumper game, and it is something that I really, really enjoy. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I'm i like, play this. I want to play more and more and more of it. Well, and, and the first time we play it, I remember trying to understand and figured out, figuring out the intricacies of the nonviolent factions. Very different... I love that paradigm shift. I think it helps you, once again, think about history in a different, in a different, uh, from a different point of view. And I love this game. It is absolutely beautiful. They have a very well developed solita solitaire system called Arjuna, and uh, that's something that it's so good they're modifying it and putting yes. it into the other ones too, which I appreciate. So they've now kind of gone back. I know Fire in the Lake. They're they're redoing that bot. It's called Tr Truong, I think. I, yeah. the name. But I think they're doing it to a bunch of the other yeah. ones too. So it's amazing to see Bruce, the designer, you know, this is his first effort. I know he worked on it. You can tell it's a labor of love. But he took a, a conflict that you normally wouldn't see as, as a coin type thing. Although it, it fit, checks all the boxes. It's just there's not as much combat direct uh, Yeah, you conflict. don't have the open battle as yeah. that you do in some, some of the other games. Yeah. So just very different, but it's really, really great. Yeah, um, it's a fantastic piece of history, which you don't see every day. Yeah, agree. And, and that's, agree. And that's a big reason why I think I love it so much, is I'm like, yeah, you know, how often do you play a game about this? Not how often do you read or watch a documentary about it? It's yeah, just a not piece very of history often. we don't cover in the West. Much. I think most of us think of Gandhi, we, Ben Kingsley, isn't that kind of yeah, synonymous? You just watch, because he it's the played, movie, yeah. and that's anyone, all anyone yeah. knows, which is fantastic, yeah. but here you get to like play it out, yeah. there's a lot of good information in the playbooks as well, it's a really nice yeah. tool that you could use in the classroom, but as a game, it is really fun to play as yes, well. Yes, very enjoyable. So. It's my number two on this list, so let me just flip that over. <laughs> this was a hard one not to include on my War Games list, just because... You know, I think of coin series games. I think of war games, and but I we had that conversation. We discussed those different points, and I kept it off of my war game list. But it definitely is a great game. I don't care. You can call it whatever you want. It's a great game. Yeah. I, I've enjoyed our plays of this. I want to get this back to the table. I want to do. Uh, we've talked about doing it on Vassal. Um, Anyway, just a very enjoyable game that I had a good time with. So that was my number two as well. And of all the coin <clears> games, <throat> I don't know if this is purely conjecture. This might <clears throat> be a good way to get someone into that system. Because yeah. I feel like it's not a war game in that sense. Yeah. If you give someone Vietnam, they're like... <clears throat> that turns a lot of people off yeah. who aren't war gamers. Because of the subject. Whereas this is something that might, different. might be. Maybe I, I would more say, interesting. though... I believe this one is really intricate, and it's, yeah, I, I don't want to say it. overly difficult, but man, I struggled with those. Trying to meet my victory conditions with the way I was supposed to do it was very, very difficult. And that, that's because I didn't really understand it fully and still have not come to understand and it. And maybe that's because we've played a lot of coin games. Maybe if maybe, this is your first one... Maybe it's might, a little it easier. Might, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, that's, it's pure speculation. But yeah. But it's great a game. very good game. Great game. And, uh, you know, I, I made the comment that the map is just gorgeous. I think this is second to Liberty or Death, the, the best looking map, I think, in the series. It's it's a it's the I like. Oh, it is I good. just love the I colors. Like Pen Dragon though. Well, Pen, they're all great. How do you? It's just like yeah, you can't. Anyway, my number two. Okay, my number two. My number one, unsurprisingly, is Pax Premier. This game is unbelievably good. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we've talked about the production value off the chain. Um, so it's <clears throat> which is great if you can do that these days. Like a game should be nice as well. Right. Right. So that's awesome. But the gameplay in this, oh my goodness. It is so, it's so tight, mm -hmm. you have so little wiggle room for well, mistakes. Money, you just can't get money. It's very difficult to get money, and money, money's what you do 
everything with. Yes. You buy your cards, you you pay to assassinate, I, and you just you can't do it enough. It's it's vi- so the economy is very easy to break in this game. Yes. And I remember the first time we played it, we did that. We spent all our money, and there was no money left in the game. We couldn't really do anything, and, and I was like, oh no, have I wasted my money? Yeah. I was kind of like, oh crap, was that bad? Is yeah. this a disappointing game? Everyone loves it, and I'm like, is this not good? And I remember that very first time I was, I almost wrote the game off. But I think I kept saying to you, I can feel there's something here. So we played it again, yep. and it was like, ooh, yeah. okay. And then we played it again. And by that time, so now I'm like, yeah. I'm being very careful with mm-hmm. how and when I spend my money on what I spend it on, when I'm willing to take a gamble and put a lot of money out there to yep. get a really good card. You can't do that very often in a, in a game. You might do it once or twice at most. Yeah. But... But understanding how the economy works uh, will allow you to to really get to grips with this game. Yeah, and it's so good. It, like, it's a war game in the sense that you're putting units out and you can yeah. find control different and, units and yeah. control them. But to me, the focus is so much more on that marketplace, mm-hmm. when and how you buy cards, uh, the kind of cards that are in favor at that time. Yep. Because there's a changing, uh, whatever they, I can't remember what they call that element, yeah. but. And then my favorite part of this is you have your little tableau. Mm-hmm. Best part. Yeah. And you have to have a certain number of types of cards out to have a bigger tableau. Yeah. But so then, purple cards give you like extra card you can have in your tableau. Yes. And, I think it was purple. And but. then, and, but, but having that. You've got those spies going around the different courts. Yep. And so I'm putting my little spies out, and then I'm moving them along card a chain by of cards card. into your cards, into your yep. tableau, and now I can start assassinating your cards. So yep. you've got this really nice card, and I've got a spy on there, and you're like, ah, oh, crap. Now I've got to put a spy on there to counteract your yep. spy. And so I'm like, I'll put another spy out there. And all this time you're doing yep. that, there's an area control game going on in the middle. Yep. So there's a lot of stuff to do, but it's like, ooh. The other really so cool good. The other really cool part about that tableau mechanic is each of the cards have one or maybe two symbols on them that represent actions. And you cannot if you don't have those cards in there, you can't take those type of actions. So you need to get a card out that says like Move two military units on the board, or attack, or put out a spy, etc. And you got to build three or four different types of actions, and then you've got to take f- effect of those actions and make it work for you. If you don't use that card, that card's useless. You got to get rid of it, but you can't get rid of it unless you play another card or have an assassin kill it. So it, I don't know, just that multi use and then that multi level of game is so fascinating. I love it. We did a video review on this, yes. and I think it's amazing. So that was my number one, PAX Premier Second Edition from Whirly Gig. Uh, I can't speak highly enough of this game. It's that good. So it's hard to beat that number one, because I I put it at number three, but it is hard to beat that. So I'm, I'm going to bring out my number one, and you may be like, what the heck is he talking about? <laughs> but we have played this game with our father-in-law. Yeah. How many times? I mean, we played through two full campaigns. Yeah, so like 30 times. Yeah, probably. So, Lord of the Rings, and once again, it's Lord of the Rings, so it's kind of like that Star Wars thing. Once you have that name on the box... (laughs) We'll play it. We're going to play it. (laughs) But Lord of the Rings, Journeys in Middle-Earth. So this is a very interesting, it's a miniatures-based skirmish game that also includes missions and objectives and a little bit of role-playing as well because there's some... Like there's encounters where you have to kind of interrogate, and you have to, and there's choices. Yeah. So this is an app. It's an app-driven game. Yes, That's which, which is very that. interesting. But it, it's just so fantastic. The miniatures are fantastic. It is a, it's a, a a modular board, so it will tell you when you move into a certain area what tiles to put out, and it'll tell you what is on those tiles, either enemies or tokens that you have to investigate, or clues or items. And it's just, it's a it's a journey game where you're kind of journeying through this world and trying to, you're racing against a clock yes. because your <laughs> corruption track is, it's kind of counting up. And once it hits certain levels, bad things happen. More monsters come out or a new new trap happens or, and when you hit the end, you you fail. Um, I don't know, but it mixes all the, all the different genres. There's skirmish and tactics and battle. There's 
movement economy? How am I trying to figure out how to, with my min minimal movement, how am I going to get around this board in the time limit allotted? You're working as a team. There's two or three of you. You can play it solo. I, I don't know. I, I can't say enough about this game. We played through two full campaigns. Yes. I liked the second one better than I did the first one. We lost both of them. Did we not? And we lost both of them on the very last mission. Yeah. <laughs> Which was sad, and it actually felt like a real letdown. So, and I'll be honest, that's why this isn't on my list. Yeah. Because this is a campaign game. Yep. Uh, you don't just play scenarios, you gotta play through the whole campaign. Yeah. And both of the two campaigns we ended were kind of on a, on a downer. Yeah. And it's not because we lost. Yeah. It's because of how we lost. Yeah, yeah. And it was kind of like, I felt like we were put in an unwinnable situation and it was kind of like oh dang Can yeah that? like really kind of a bummer oh man well i remember the second campaign we lost it because we weren't understanding what it was trying to convey to us yeah like it we, was saying things and we weren't comprehending and right it properly like it which was just frustrating yeah it was a little frustrating and there was no recourse yeah there wasn't a rule book on that scenario there was really just the text that we were receiving on the app as we played through it. So, yeah, a little bit frustrating. But How, However, mechanically, this game oh, is super fun. The, the other really cool part is the little deck you have. Oh, it's the best. So it's you so build good. a little, I think they call it a battle deck. Sure. And within it, you have eight or ten cards that are kind of your standard fare. It's like move and attack or, you know, do this. and But, yeah. they, but they all have like success rating. So as you pull these cards that are fueling those, it's like if you get one success, you can do really well. But if you get two, man, you, you kill two people. Or I, I don't know. I just love that. And you try to build and customize that deck. Sometimes you get bad cards in there because you failed something or yes. did something wrong. I hated those bad cards. But there's a bit of a legacy aspect to that. Yeah. As you grow your character through the campaign, you have you have like... Your standard deck of cards, but then you have your character cards. Yep. So I'm Legolas. Boom, I got my Legolas cards yeah. in there. But I'm also, I have a class as well. So I might be a hunter, or a guide, or a captain. Or a or, thief. Yeah. And, and and those cards, there's a pool of those, and you'll have some standard ones from that. So that gives you mm -hmm. more flavor. But as you grow and get experience, you can change those out for more powerful ones and better abilities. Yeah. So that changes. Yeah. Uh, and you have your items so i might have a sword and a cloak they grow and yeah improve. you know your sword becomes a better sword with better abilities or an mm. easier capacity to do damage or your cloak might give you a better ability to hide yeah just or there's a you know it's all that kind of little crunchy stuff that you would expect from a dungeon crawler style game that stuff's the fun stuff in this game yeah. that's what i enjoy we play gloomhaven a lot like yeah. that 50 times yeah not an exaggeration and yeah, not an exaggeration no, at all. Well, I mean, it's probably played more than that. It's yeah. embarrassing. And I played it with, with my father-in-law <laughs> online as well. Uh, but that that's what I like in that game too, right? Yeah. It's the building yeah. of your of your attack deck, it's mm -hmm. your it's your items and how you use yeah, those. Improving your character. This gives me a similar type of feel in the way right. that you go through your cards, your growth of your items and character. That's those that's the things I like in those mm -hmm. games. Mm -hmm. And how it plays out. You get what, what's nice about this is because it's app driven, uh, you get all these random encounters. Yeah. And there's so many of them. Yeah. And I, it's rare that you find something twice. I, I think we've only run into the same thing once or twice. Out of probably 150 100, yeah. odd. Which is encounters. amazing in and of itself. That's really nice. So you, it's. There's a lot of unknown in this from that. And we haven't. I think this. Is this the only app driven game we've really played? Uh, yes. I mean, this, how. Uh, what is it? Haunted, well, from Fantasy Flight Games, they, we have not played Matches that game. Of Madness. Matches of Madness. Yeah, not, I want to play that, but... Yeah, we have not expensive. played any other app-driven games. But this, you know, so I take that with a pinch of salt. I don't know how other ones work. I'm sure it's yeah. somewhat similar in, in those regards, but it's it's refreshing getting like, oh, something very new. Yeah. Like, yeah. you go for an encounter, and it's like, I genuinely have no idea what's going to yeah. happen. Yeah. And, and, it, and it gives you this cryptic thing, and you get a choice of like, well... Yeah. I know one of these is bad and one of these is less bad. So, yeah, right. Uh, yeah. 
So that's and that's that role playing aspect yep. of like, oh, what do I think I should do, or what would my character do? That's yeah. it's cool. I like yeah. that kind of stuff. Well, and the miniatures are really great. The production value is really high. It's an expensive game. This cost me, I think it was ninety five dollars. So and I think it's a little bit less than that now. Probably, but I bought it literally the but it's, yeah, it's, second it's, or third week. Of it's it was probably out. eight eighty five bucks. Yeah. Still. But they're they're supposedly working on the next expansion, um, so it's it's one of those legacy style games that's going to continue to grow like their collectible card games. Uh, it, I'm sure it could be a money sink depending on how far it well, goes. Well, and and it's like any of those games, you know, you get the base one, you might get one or two expansions, and then you kind of move on maybe because you got tired of it or the next new thing came along. But I've enjoyed this game. I've had a lot of fun playing it. I thought it was my number one non-war game of, of 2019. What I like about this is that it's something that we could play with John, our father. Yeah, absolutely. And that's it's always nice to play games with him because he can't sit down and play things like right. you know, Fire in the Lake with us. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. It would be great if he could, but he can't. <laughs> yeah, but like this is something thematic that he's really attached to. Yep, he, he loves, loves Lord, Lord of the Rings. And it's, and it's app-driven so we can... You know, yeah. we plug, we put it on a big screen a big TV, TV and like, he can see it really well, and and, and, it, and it's that's really nice. Yeah. It's a really good opportunity for us to play together yeah. with lots of people, and this game does that. You yep. can play up to five. You can get really big parties. Oh yeah, you, that might be a bit. It would you, take a long time, and and the app scales of how many yeah. how many bad guys you fight and how strong they are. So it might, yeah. the more guys you have, the more brutal the enemies are going to be. So. Yeah. It, there's just a lot of cool stuff in it. It's fun. Yep. I look forward to the next expansion. We'll try it. Yep. And, you know, after that, I'll decide if I put my money into it or not. But it's enjoyable. So there you go. So one other game we wanted to talk about, because neither of us had this on our list, but I thought we really enjoyed it, and I, I wanted to bring it up. So, so honorable mentions time. Yeah, honorable mentions time. So this is a game that came out in 2019, Ancient Civilizations of the Inner Sea from GMT Games. The game is designed by Mark McLaughlin and Christer, Christopher Vorder Brugge. They're old college roommates and friends and played miniature war games like Napoleonics. They designed this game together. This is a light, very light, very chaotic civilization building game. Yes. We did a video review on this several months ago, and I wrote a series of uh, blog posts kind of explaining some of the rules and concepts. But it's really a take that card based game. Yeah. Did we right? play it with five people? We played with it with Josh, Josh, Matt, Tim, you and I, so five. Yeah. And we didn't know everything. We 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 made some mistakes. We've talked about we want to get it back to the table. Yeah. Because it's a light, fun game. If you go into the game thinking you're gonna develop a winning strategy, if you think you're gonna develop a strategy that's unbeatable, or you think you're gonna go in and dominate a certain part of the board, you're kidding yourself. This game changes on a on the drop of a hat. One card play can totally ruin everything you're doing. Yeah. And you just need to understand that when you go yeah. into the game. It's not a overly strategic game. Have fun, do your best. Frankly, it also suffers from whoever's in the lead Gets you know, up on. is going to get ganged up on and everybody's going to play cards on that person. So it suffers from that a little bit and then someone's going to squeak in and win from the back. But it was fun. I enjoyed it. I don't think every element about it I loved. I think there were some parts that I was like, oh, I could live or live or yeah, I could just the, let that one go. It's a game that I would like to give it more chances. Play it at a convention with a bunch of yeah. people. We're just having have some fun. Yep. I think that's that, that. This is a really good game for that because it can support quite a lot of people. Yeah. Which yeah. there's not many games that can. That's like one to five. It's a lot. One to six. One to six. six. So that's a lot. That's a lot. But yeah, I, it's it was fun. I enjoyed it. But. Yeah. Well, I I just I think I've heard a lot of negativity about it, and I think those people are missing the mark. I think they just need to understand that's not what it is. Yeah. This is not civilization. No. The you, game. Yeah. You right? got, you got to understand what this is. Yeah. Because I you know I was kind of like. Eh. Yeah. Like I would rather play uh, Man Nostrum. Well. Marinostrum is an amazing game. It's really good. Yeah. But I, that doesn't mean I would write this off. I still want to give yeah, it a couple try more it again, plays. Yeah. Because it was, you know, we had a good time. Yeah. Let's not pretend we didn't have a good time. Yeah. It was kind of like, it's just, what am I expecting from this game? Right. You've got to have good expectations. Right. Because understand what it is, what it's trying to be. Yeah. So I, I, I just wanted to give a shout out to this game because I think it was very, very interesting. So, kind of an honorable mention. Yeah. I think the other, I'm not sure how many other... 
honorable well, mentions I would put on the list. That expansion for the Alien. Oh yeah, uh, game from. Uh, so yeah, Legendary Encounters. They had um, Alien Covenant. Alien right? Covenant expansion, which well, we've played that game a yeah. lot. And uh, we never win. No, it's ever. it's it's unbelievably difficult, as it should be for a co-op game. Uh, and so they came out in 2019 with with a Covenant expansion. So I picked it up at Gen mm-hmm. Con, and it had like a nice exclusive. As and well. we bought the Predator game there, didn't we? Or no, did you I, I got that, that separately. Okay, but they had the other Alien expansion as well, mm-hmm. which is uh, a bit more uh, made up. Okay, fun. Really difficult, yeah, but yeah. just kind of just some like some like made up scenarios that aren't in the movies. So I bought both of those there, but the but the Covenant expansion is dope because you you can either play against uh, the alien or you can the, play, you can play against David, <laughs> uh, and it, and it's just like it, it's very very uh, it's just so difficult. Yeah, like the most difficult game of all time. We'll never win, but it's just beautiful well, it's, artwork. Yeah. It's fun to play. Well, and if you love that movie franchise, which I do, I, I mean, yeah. even the newer ones that aren't as great, you know, Prometheus was cinematically beautiful. So was Covenant, really. Yeah, Covenant was beautiful. But I, the stories both had some Issues. elements that I, I think we watched both those together. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's that alien universe, I think, that, that is continuing that in my mind and that love for it but if you go into that game thinking you're going to win often no. you're kidding yourself and that's because... what I like you know we, we whenever we, we play a big war game and it's like alright let's you know yeah, let's, let's sit back and relax cool down yeah. and let's lose a game together yeah right and it's and, and it's, it's co-op so it's fun but the, the one of the things that I love about every game in that series is there's a, a deck of wound cards and you only have a certain amount of health seven eight nine and I always seem to the first couple of cards, it's like, yep, you drew the one five debt or five. Yeah. Uh, All the ones you can't remove. Yeah, you can't remove wound. this. And it's like, oh, I'm screwed. Yeah. So I know it's over before it even starts. <laughs> but we still have a great time with it. So that Alien Covenant yeah, that's a, that's expansion a was a really mission. good one. Um, yeah, there were a lot of other good games that I think we played in. 2019, but but the the ones that were released in 2019, yeah. I think that that's the list. We played yeah. a lot of just our old games, yeah. which is nice, but. So that's our non-war game 2019 lists. Yeah. So that's something I would love you guys to put in the comments of ones that yeah. you um, play. Only because I don't feel like we just don't we just play more war games, right? Right. So right. any non-war games, let us know what you played and loved. And that might be something we get to take a look at in the future as well. well. I know there were a couple games that we never bought, like The Thing. From uh, oh. I can't remember who made that, but we that saw it at Gen Con. Yeah. So we Dang. saw it at Gen Con, and it was such an interesting looking game. We can never get set down for a demo. The, oh my gosh, there and was a queue of 250 people yeah. for, an, for one, one table. Slot. And I was like, why don't you have three tables going? Because I probably would have bought a game. Because that's a, that's a, it's a hidden identity game. A hidden trader as well, yeah. I, and just so fantastic. I like those, you've got to have a lot of people for them though, so it's yeah. hard to find those. But oh, the thing, a great theme, yeah, and it a, looked great. Yeah. Oh, I want to play that one. So that someday. was another one I think we, I wanted to play and looked really amazing. So, but anyway, yeah, yeah. So appreciate you guys tuning in. Let us know what you liked in the comments. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com, and I'm Grant.